I filmed the entire intro to this, started doing my makeup, and then my camera just decided, screw that crap, I'm just gonna get rid of everything. So, for the second time, let's get into it. Sorry about uh, all of this, sorry about the fact that I already have part of my makeup on. I was actually already filming and then my camera decided to crash. So, well, my phone decided to crash, you know how it is. Um, everything I'm wearing on my face, always link down below if you're curious. The palette that I'm gonna be using today is the Stila something something. A whole lot of love gift set, got it as a present. Blushes are great, uh, eyeshadows not quite so much. It looks like this. Anyway, um, let's get into it. Since I've been gone for a little bit and, you know, it's a little hard jumping right back in with Chantel given that she's absolutely insane and she's been doing a whole lot of stupid crazy shit on her channel, I figured let's start back into it with the queen of the girls, Amberlynn Reed, right? And Amberlynn has been falling off a little bit recently. If you guys have noticed, um, Amber has been... Her views have been declining for a little while, right? For all that, we give Amber a lot of crap most of it well deserved. She does also tend to have a lot less train wreck appeal nowadays than Chantal does, right? Amber does seem to be growing up a little bit, which I can appreciate. Now, do I think Amber is going growing up correctly, quote unquote? Is she doing things to better her life? Not necessarily, but she is trying to portray herself to be less of a train wreck, and that's at least something. I'm just um, brushing through like a light brown through my crease. I don't have any of the names for these anymore, so it's just like a, a medium toned brown color. But at least she's trying to do that. Unfortunately, the side effect of that is that her channel is boring. Um, she doesn't do a lot, right? In the sense that she has a very sedentary life and she's just not very adventurous. She's pretty goddamn boring. She's pretty tame in what she does for the most part. And anything that might be a little bit controversial, she tends to edit out of her channel for fear of, you know, backlash that she might receive. She edits away pretty much all of her personality that might engage a person and draw a person in. I'm not putting a slightly darker shade just in the corners of my eyes. And so it's a little bit hard to stay engaged with her content where she's not actively being a train wreck because there really isn't much there. Not to mention the fact that the majority of the audience that she's developed is just there for the train wreck aspect of it. So if she wants that new audience, she's going to have to work for it. And it's going to take a little bit of time before you can transition from one type of audience to another. Anyway, the reason I wanted to start back in with uh, Amberlynn was originally when I thought about coming back, I figured I would start with like a week by week breakdown. And since she has such fewer videos in comparison to Chantel, I figured it would be fine. I haven't applied concealer, I just realized. So um, I was gonna I was gonna do that, but then something happened. And yes, I'm talking about Depopgate. I figured I would just talk about this one thing and then from next week, I will just go through and I will do her week by week, sort of like the regular style of videos that I do. Now, what happened with her earrings? Let me give you a little bit of background before we get directly into it. So, uh, if you guys know Amber, if you guys don't know Amber, I, I'm surprised this is the first video you've ever decided to watch, but Amber Lynn Reed is 600 pounds and she has addiction issues, right? Like food addiction is the one that's featured most on her channel, but you can see other aspects of addictive personality in her. It's much more prevalent and easy to pick up on in Chantel, who is heavily doing drugs at this point, right? A lot of them legal, but some of them not. With Amber, it's a little harder to because the way that hers tends to manifest is consumerism. Now, Chantel doesn't make as much money off of her channel as Amber does. And I think that's one of the major reasons why Amber's consumerism and her addiction to shopping and owning and possessing things is so very visible to us. She just has a lot more money to do that with. And she lives in a state where the cost of living is relatively low, right? Um, the uh, Ottawa area, I think in general, is a little bit more expensive to live in, but I could be wrong on that. So if you guys know more, please do correct me on that. I'm using two different concealers here. One of them is the ColourPop No Filter, and the other one is the Revolution Conceal and Define. And the reason I'm using them in conjunction is because the ColourPop one is so dry. It is such a dry concealer. So having both of them is just a little bit easier. Um, and I have like eczema problems. So like my skin underneath my eyes is a little sensitive right now. I don't want to just go in with straight ColourPop. Anyway, she tends to show, use money, use stuff as a way to um, uh, essentially demonstrate love, right? 
Um, and so she, you saw, she went ham on uh, buying Christmas decorations to cel celebrate Christmas with Becky. She bought um, Destiny, like, what was it, like 50 gifts or something like that one Christmas when they were together, the last Christmas that they were together. She goes ham on buying stuff for Halloween, and she doesn't need to. And the way that this manifests the worst is her addiction to buying earrings. Now, Amber loves earrings. And if she was the kind of person who went and bought like three pairs of diamond earrings or like gold earrings, I would honestly be less upset by that. Because yes, the act of spending that much money that you don't need to, that you could be saving is the same, but at least those things have some inherent value and they will retain that value going forward. What Amber tends to do uh, as most of you guys are probably aware, is buy a massive amount of cheap junk cosmetic earrings. She'll go to places like Walmart and Target and she'll buy multiple pairs of earrings that are like the same style, just in different colors. And she'll just buy all of them. She'll spend hundreds of dollars at a time buying earrings. And it's really like, it's really odd. It's really odd the way she fixates on them. It's really odd the way that she um, like, seems to be galvanized by them. It's really odd how much like time, energy, and effort she in invests in having this massive quote unquote collection of earrings. Now, the thing about a collection, and I, this is why I don't like people who use collection for makeup too. You can't collect a consumable, first of all. It's not a thing you can do. Makeup, much like, um, like food, will go bad. So there was like this one a Reddit post of some guy who collected a bunch of yogurts. You can't collect yogurts right? You can only buy yogurt. You can consume yogurt. You can buy yogurt. You can't collect yogurt because it will go bad because that's just the nature of consumable goods. You can, now you could say earrings aren't like that. Yes, but e earrings is also not a finite collection. So when you're saying I want to collect coins from every country in the world, there's a finite number of countries that you can have at any given moment. That might change a little bit in the future, but not by much, right? When you say you are, you are a uh, vintage stamp collector, there are a certain limited number of vintage stamps out there for you to buy. Earrings are not like that, or at least they're not um, similar in that sense that there's not gonna be like 400 earrings out there that you can buy. Sorry, my mirror light turned off. There's not 400 earrings out there. There are a billion earrings out there from every culture, every you know uh, sect, every ethnicity, they've got their own version of it. And it's absolutely insane to be collecting earrings, especially because she doesn't even seem to do it in a way that makes sense, right? She just go to like Walmart and buy a bunch of earrings that are like all like the same, the exact same, just in different colors. And sometimes she doesn't even remember what she has, so she'll buy multiple pairs of the same kind of earrings, the exact same color style, everything, right? And the way she does it reminds me of hoarding. Now, forming an emotional attachment with a physical object is not unusual and it's not weird. I have a pair of earrings that I got that belong to my grandmother that are like one of the most precious items to me in the entire world. You know, if I don't wear them for fear that if I ever lost a pair, like one, one of those earrings, I would, I don't know what I would do with my life. Like genuinely, I'm so scared of losing them. And it's the same thing. I can't put them in a bank either because I'm scared of putting them in a bank and potentially losing the key or not being able to access them. And I have a weird emotional bond to them because they were my grandmother's and I, I was very close to my grandmother. Now, it's not like that for Amber, right? Having one item or a couple of items or a few items or a finite list of items that you're attached to is not the same as wanting all of the earrings in the world, especially because, as per her own admission, she doesn't even wear the vast majority of them. They just sort of sit there. So buying things just to have them says to me of hoarding, right? Um, she needs that stuff to complete an emotional hole, the same way that she eats to fill an emotional need. And it's the same mechanism that she's using in both cases, and it's gonna have equally as poor results because you're trying to fill an emotional need with a physical item, and that's never going to work. But she keeps attempting it. Now, recently, she put up a uh, message on her Instagram saying that she wanted to sell her earrings, you know? It was, oof, okay, here's the thing. She decided she's going to resell some of her earrings. Uh, you know, she's gonna do a mystery box giveaway where it will be, you'll just pay for a box and you don't know what you're gonna get inside of it. And you can pick, I think, the color of the earrings that you want. And she'll just send you a pair. Now she's selling them each for $10. And then uh, she set up a Depop shop and she said, you know, everyone can go on to Depop and they can, you know, order the earrings from there. Now here's the thing. Um, 
Zachary Michael actually was able to get a hold of the Depop a lot faster than I was and he tried ordering through there. And uh, his video covering the ins and outs of the actual Depop situation are gonna be much better than mine is. So I highly recommend going to check that out. That said, I have some thoughts. Um, she puts up a thing on Depop and she says, it's $10 for a pair of earrings. A lot of these earrings were not worth that originally. And when stores sell you an earring, right, they, um, will buy that earring at the uh, you know manufacturing cost, they'll buy the earring at like a bulk rate, and then they will upcharge you for that earring and they will sell it back to you. And most of these earrings, especially if they're from Walmart or Target, they're manufactured in like overseas, in developing countries where the cost of labor is significantly cheaper because they can pay them pennies on the dollar and then mark it up by like four or 500% and make like a killing on it, right? That's how these big companies do it. So when you've got a pair of earrings that took very little to manufacture, and then on top of that, you bought them yourself for a markup and then are selling it to me on a markup beyond that. And on top of that, they're not rare. They're not interesting. It's not going to be a particularly great deal. Then I don't get to pick what you have. And I don't know whether it's been used or not. And if the backing is gone for it, the paper that it comes with, you don't know what alloys it was made with. So potentially I could be allergic to something in them. All of that resulted in people not really wanting to purchase from her. And I mean, that's not that's not hard to understand, I would think. Right. Um, and, you know, Amber has a very avid base of people who really severely dislike her. Something that she will base uh, her failures on in a little bit. I'll, I'll get to that. Anyway people were not happy with it and they were talking with her back and forth and she made this comment in her depop comment section people are talking about you know her doing this earring stuff and someone uh, i forget what the original comment was but she resp uh, responded with i you know the biggest purchase of earrings i ever made was 400 earrings at once and that's when i knew that i wanted to be a small business uh no um, that's not how a small business would operate. They wouldn't just go online to one store and place an order for $400 from a retailer, from a mass retailer, rather than looking for unique pieces. Like when you buy jewelry from a small boutique, from a small, and I do this a lot, right? I love buying, um, items from like a smaller privately owned places because they're really good at sourcing and curating items that I would not be able to get anywhere else. Even if they are selling it to me at a, a more expensive cost than I would be able to find uh, something of a similar quality in a big box store, the uniqueness of the items that they have from where they source is what makes it great. They work with local vendors. That's another great aspect of buying from a small business. Why would I spend money to buy earrings from you that I can just go onto Walmart or Target or I don't know, like any Ann Taylor, I don't know where she buys her earrings, any one of those places and buy the earrings from there. Why would I give you the money where I could do it cheaper somewhere else, right? Especially because once more, I don't know if the earrings are new. And very soon after she posted a video about how, you know, she was no longer doing the Depop thing. And in this, she claims one of the reasons she stopped is because somebody reported her shop because apparently you can't sell mystery box items. Now, um, you can actually, if you go onto Depop, you'll notice that other people are selling mystery boxes. So what changed exactly? I think one of the biggest things that changed was that uh, she didn't label her items as being used, which you very clearly have to define whether or not the stuff you're going to get in each individual mystery box is used or not. She didn't very, she didn't do the work for that. Uh, she didn't list it as individual items that she wanted to specify that these are used and these are not because she didn't want to do the work for that. Um, and last but not least, people aren't sure if they're ever actually going to get their product and people don't like her. So they decided to go and report her from the get go, which is maybe not fair, but that is kind of what happened. And it caused a lot of issues. Now she can still sell them. She just has to do a little bit more work for them. And I don't know if she will. So I don't know if those earrings, if the Depop shop is ever really coming back. The thing that I really want to discuss 14 minutes into giving you a recap of what's actually happened and the video that she talked about this in is, whether or not this was ever really a real possibility. Now, Amber has often said that she will go through her clothes that she doesn't fit into anymore and she will donate them um, or she'll give them to Dana and Destiny if they want them rather than like returning things, right? Um, and that kind of made sense to me because uh, she gets to do two things at once. She gets to um, essentially quote unquote buy her friend's love, but also she gets to keep indulging in her addiction, which is just buying more things. I've talked 
I think once or twice before, but I'll mention it here again, how I think declutters are maybe not the best way forward because um, declutters really encourage this entire idea of hyper consumerism because you buy a ton of stuff and then you declutter those stuff and then you buy the stuff again, especially when it comes to makeup. Um, you know, a lot of people on YouTube who do makeup will buy a ton of makeup. They get bored with it. They don't want it. They don't like it. They get rid of it and they're like, look how much space I have in my collection. You guys, I was so good. I gave it away to friends and family. Well, your friends and family didn't need that makeup anyway. If they did, they would have either asked you or they would have bought something themselves, right? Either way, this is the same thing. That's what she does. She buys a bunch of this stuff and then she gives it away to Dana and Destiny and whomever in her life. And this way she gets to both do the thing where she is essentially incentivizing people to stay friends with her and love her. And also she gets to buy new things to fill the hole that that item created in her wardrobe. And she didn't do that this time. Instead, she decided to go online and she decided to create a shop and she decided to sell these things. For a person, for a regular person, I would have said, that's great. They're like learning, they're healing from whatever it was that was compelling them to hold on to these items. And I would have been really happy. When it comes to Amber Lynn, however, I'm not sure it's quite that straightforward. I don't think Amber ever really had the intention of selling those earrings. I don't think that that was what Amber wanted to do. <sighs> Here's the thing. Amber knows that she has a hate watching audience. And while Amber is very delusional and very clearly does not understand uh, what to do to make her life better, she is not a stupid person. I've always maintained that Amber is a lot more cunning than people give her the advantage for. She might not be book learned, but she is definitely much more cunning then people give her the advantage for, and you have to be, right? We've seen her tendency to manipulate people into doing what she wants, and you have to be an intelligent person to do that. You have to be able to read a room to be able to do that, especially people who are good at manipulating and gaslighting. You have to have a very accurate read of the people that you're planning on taking advantage of to be able to take advantage of them. And I think that's essentially what Amber did. She knew that this would generate controversy. She must have learned that as much from the whole um, Norma and uh, the GoFundMe thing, right? That people will not be happy if they think that they're being taken advantage of, especially when it comes to money. So I think that she made this shop, right? This is just, I mean, my, my thoughts, right? I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I think that she created the Depop shop, knowing that someone or another was gonna report her. Some people might buy some stuff, someone or another would report her though. And then they would do exactly what I'm doing now and what Zachary Michael did before, which is that they would make a video talking about it. Recently, if you've noticed, a lot of the conversation has been focused on Chantel. People wanna know what's happening with her. People are sort of a little bit more invested in her storyline because let's be honest right now, she's the, the queen of the train wrecks, right? She is most definitely um, taking the crown from Amber, right? You can't compete with hard drugs uh, with shady characters, right? And I think that Amber wants to generate some of that buzz around herself to have more interest in her channel because I can't imagine that her views falling has been good for her. It might not be hurting her right now monetarily, but she's not stupid enough to not realize that when channel death starts and people unsubscribe or people start losing interest, it can happen very, very fast. And this is where the idea of all publicity is good publicity comes from. I think that she saw that, you know, oh, the Norma thing got me this much attention. She might not have wanted it then, but she knows how to weaponize it now. We've seen that with her repetitive attempts at mukbangs recently too. You know, with the, the very, very meme faces that she's been putting in her thumbnails. She knows that it's going to get people riled up. She knows it's going to get people to talk about her. And so she decides, all right, well, uh, it's fine. At least it'll get people to engage with my content again. It'll bring up my, you know, subscriptions. It might bring up my revenue. It'll bring up all those things again. And so she was willing to do it. It didn't work quite as well because while she was still trying to do the mukbanging thing and bring people back to the fold that way, I mean, Chantel was once more out here doing hard drugs uh, with potentially incredibly problematic and abusive people. So people still didn't have all that interest in her. And she thought, well, all right, that didn't work. Let me see if I can maybe run a scam. And I don't think she ever really had the intention of selling her earrings. And the reason that I say that is because when you have got an unhealthy attachment to consuming things, it's very, very hard to get rid of it without therapy. You guys, if you've ever seen hoarders, you will understand. People on there have a really, really hard time letting go. And 
I think what helped inform my opinion on this, there's there's a person that I follow on um, on YouTube. She does, she talks a lot about like feminist talking points, about the point of view of um, black and BIPOC people in American society. And she talked about how she has hoarding tendency and how she, she did made a video talk, I think it was called something like, uh, I got dragged on Twitter for being a hoarder. Her name is uh, Kimberly Nicole Foster. And the channel that she runs, she has a private one and she also has one called For Harriet fantastic creator highly recommend her and she had talked about like the act of hoarding and how difficult it was for her to keep on top of it and I think that's what it is and I think it can become so emotionally difficult to actually find a way out of it for her it was just that her house would get gross and messy and that she had a really hard time keeping it clean for Amber, I think the act of buying all these earrings becomes sort of like a sale, fail safe now. She can't let them go and she keeps adding more things to her collection. And I don't think that while she has the means to essentially store them in her house, she's ever really going to get rid of them. I don't really think she has the capability for it, especially because she doesn't do anything to help out her like mental state. She doesn't do anything to make it better. She doesn't do anything to try and ease some of that like mental burden that she carries that would get her to a place where she'd be okay with letting go of her, frankly and healthy, attachments to things. All in all, I think that this was just something to get us all talking. And quite frankly, I think that that is right. Now, I haven't seen a lot of reactors talking about this, mostly just because I have been both sick and incredibly busy. And if you aren't aware, I have paint in my hair right now. Um, I've actually paint all down my decollete and I have paint on my face and in my eyebrows. I was helping a, a friend of mine paint their house this past weekend. I, we're not done yet, so we're still painting. And the problem, <laughs> the problem is that... Uh, I cannot seem to get the paint out of my hair and I'm very, very clumsy, so I ended up getting paint everywhere. Like, I have paint, like, I don't know if you guys can tell. Nope, here, there, there. Yeah, so you have paint, like, all down my arms and stuff still. They're all on my legs. I've tried cleaning it, still there. Um, <laughs> what was I talking about? I got so distracted. What I mean to say is that, um, I haven't really had the opportunity to see what other people are saying. I watched Zachary Michael's video on it and that was pretty much it, but, he didn't mention this aspect of it and I thought it was important to mention that I think she might be conning us a little bit and it wouldn't surprise me if she I mean it wouldn't surprise me if she was making an attempt at selling it it was just as half-assed as it is but honestly it would surprise me even less if it came out that yeah she knew that this was gonna happen and that she was just trying to generate some controversy she's admitted as much too in the past that she trolls people and while I don't think once a troll always a troll uh, I think that there's still enough of a troll left in Amber to do stuff like this and she's demonstrated her ability and willingness to engage with these sorts of behaviors years a multitude of times in the past especially once more with her repetitive attempts at making mukbangs recently uh with all of those meme faces to try and get people re-enraged and try and get people talking about her and try and generate more buzz around her name and that will be all this was my makeup look hold on let me take my hair down one sec There you have it. That's the completed look. It's pretty simple. It's a very easy to wear every single day kind of a look. The colors that I wore, let me just show them to you really, really fast. The colors that I put on my face were I put this in my crease, followed by a little bit, oop, the other way, a little bit of this darker color just to start deepen out the outer edges. And then I went in with right in the inner corner, I put this color in just um, to try and brighten it. This is also what I'm using as a highlighter. And then I put this all over my lid. This It's a really, really sparkly shade. It's a little crumbly though. And then I have this blush right here all over my face. And then once more, you guys know, I was using my um, Too Faced uh, Chocolate Soleil in uh, medium deep as my bronzer, which looks like this. And some gloss. Anyway, that will be it for this look. That will be it for this video. Let me know what you guys really think. 
um, about the situation. Let me know if you guys agree with my analysis of it. Let me know if you think I am completely off base and I'm just falsely maligning Amber's character. I could be off base here, but given what I know about her character, given what I know about the way that she behaves, and given what I know about her falling viewership and interest in her channel and even her larger story arc as a whole, I don't think I am. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, um, you know, I've got all my social medias. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you hated this video, you can give me a thumbs down. That's totally okay. I respect everybody's opinions here. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Hit the notification bell down below and hit all when I, you know, to see any videos that I've uploaded, anything at all. Um, and it'll let you know when I upload new ones. So, you know, that's a thing. I've got all my social medias linked down below. I've got Instagram, where I've got food stuff, life stuff, a little bit of everything, more stuff always coming. I've got Twitter, which is a little bit of a hot mess right now, given the political climate that we're in, but um, hopefully you'll get back to some form of regular content soon. And I've got Patreon. Think of Patreon as a tip jar for the internet. So if you like the job that I'm doing here and you would like me to continue, hey, consider tossing a few coins in my direction. You don't have to. It's not necessary, but I would really appreciate it if you did. And it really does help the channel out, as always. I'm Jasmine, the sequel, and I am not relatable. Peace. Special thank you to my patrons, Acrophobe, Ariel M, Christina, Courtney E.P., Wild Rose, Xanthal, Jam Beans, Jay Thomas, Lauren Chris, Michael B. Petty, Debbie Elliott, Julia Q, Kate O, and a special thank you to my $25 patron, D. Higgins.